Hello, Team Agilam. How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing great. So, we are now on our second episode of a series that we started on the book of Ephesians. And this is the second episode of that. And as we discussed last week, what we looked at last week was basically looking at the audience and the context of what was happening at the time when Paul was writing this letter. And that's really where we started off. And so we're really kind of picking up from last week, uh, the last message that we did. And so that we can continue on um, on this incredible book. Now, if you remember what we discussed last time was the fact that this audience that was being addressed in Ephesus was a lot like the modern world we live in today. And we also talked about how the fact that this book is a book for grown-ups, right? Or people that want to grow in their faith. And so the thing is, is that these, uh, I want you to be able to uh, do something as is our regular custom. I want you to be able to go and read Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. I want you to read Ephesians chapter 1. And as soon as you finish reading it, I want you to come back and continue watching this video. So pause this video right now and go read Ephesians chapter 1. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Um, so, from the chapter that you just read, I want us to start from the very top, which is in regards to the salutation that Paul has in this letter. Because this salutation has an indication for us in regards to whom he is addressing in this letter. Most times when Paul wrote his letters is that he was speaking to a very specific situation. What was happening within that community of faith and he begins to address that but in, a, in this in this specific letter there isn't necessarily a specific issue that he's addressing but there's a specific people that he is addressing and you see this in his salutation where he starts off by saying Paul an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God to God's holy people in Ephesus the faithful in Christ Jesus what this letter is pointing us to is that it indicates that the audience of the letter was a group of believers who are not just people who are believers, but people who are committed to their faith in Jesus Christ. By addressing the holy and faithful, what Paul is doing is that he's distinguishing them, number one, from obviously non-believers or even those new to the faith. But he's, he's, he's suggesting a level of maturity and commitment amongst the recipients. And remember what we talked about, that some of the things that are addressed in this letter are for grown-ups. These, 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 are, these are things that he's, he's addressing. And, and it's very different that you notice from, for example, the letter to the Corinthians, the first letter to Corinthians, where Paul addresses some very specific issues in the church. And listen to how he starts off that letter to the Corinthians. He says... This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and from our brother Sosthenes. I am writing to God's church in Corinth, to you who have been called by God to be his own holy people. He made you holy by means of Christ Jesus, just as he did for all people everywhere who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the thing that he does the same thing in the book of Ephesians. He says, to God's holy people. Same thing he's saying in the Corinthians. To God's holy people. Because holiness in Christ Jesus is imparted upon us. We are made holy through faith in Christ Jesus. We are set apart. And you, through our union with Christ, we are set apart. But what you see in the book of Corinthians is that he very specifically says to the Corinthians in chapter 3, he says, dear brothers, when I was with you, I couldn't talk to you as I would to spiritual people. I had to talk as though you belonged to this world or as, or as though you were infants in Christ. I had to feed you with milk, not with solid food, because you weren't ready for anything stronger and you still aren't ready. For you are still controlled by your sinful nature. 
you are jealous of one another and quarrel with each other, doesn't that prove that you are controlled by your sinful nature? Aren't you living like people of the world? When one of you says, I'm a follower of Paul, and another one says, I'm a follower of Apollos, aren't you acting just like people of the world? And so the thing is, is that you see in the book of Corinthians, in that letter, that he is addressing the holy people, but he tells them, you're immature. But in Ephesians, this is a letter, not to just those that are set apart, but to the faithful, to those committed to their faith in Christ Jesus. And that's part of the reason why the letter contains such deep theological insights and practical instructions that are aimed actually at strengthening the faith of those who are committed to Christ Jesus. That's the reason you see there topics about the unity of the church, the mystery of the gospel. It even goes into topics around spiritual warfare. This is grown-up stuff that he's talking about because he's not just addressing the holy people, he's also addressing the faithful. Amen? And these are all things that he's sharing that are particularly relevant and encouraging to those who are, who are already faithful. Basically, what he's doing is that he's reinforcing their belief and their devotion. Like I mentioned, it's, this letter is not addressing a specific issue, but it's, it's definitely addressing a specific people. Those who are committed the faithful, those committed to Christ. You know, one of the things that God has been ministering to me about this year specifically, and towards the end of last year into this year, has been about me growing up. You know, the thing is, is that you need to understand that growing up in the faith is not just about how much time you've been a believer, but it's about your faithfulness. There are people like the Corinthians who had spent time in the faith, but were still immature. They were still gossiping about one another, unforgiving, putting people down. And so the thing is, is that the thing we need to realize is that many times it doesn't matter how long you've been a believer or how many years, because there are people who may have been believers for years, but are still immature in God's eyes. And what God has specifically been ministering to me has been about, being, about moving from being a child to being a son, teaching me about sonship. And so it's interesting that through the lessons that he has been taking me through, I found myself during that period of time in the book of Numbers, and right now I'm in Deuteronomy, where I've been looking at the children of Israel the story of the children of Israel. And then by contrast, here we are doing a series on the book of Ephesians. You know, in the, in the New Testament, uh, which is written in Greek, there are two words that, are unfortunately, because of, of English being very limited in translation, there are many times where you see the phrase that's used, children of God, sons of God, and they are used interchangeably. But actually, the root words are different. So, for example, in the New Testament Greek, there's the word technon, and then there's the word huios. Now, both are used to refer to children or sons, but they carry different nuances and connotations, right? Now, this is a breakdown. So, basically, technon. In by literal meaning, it's derived from the root word tikto, which means to beget, to give birth. So therefore, technon literally refers to offspring. This is biological, a child, offspring. So basically, it's used in many ways to kind of, you know, emphasize the physical or natural relationship between a parent and a child. This is now, the, this is the biological term of a child. Right? This is someone who has been born as a child. Like this is, this is now we're talking about physical. Right? So it carries, in a sense, this aspect of, of, of lineage, descent, 
you know, dependency. In fact, you know, it's like a baby, immaturity, you know, a need for guidance and care. This is the child. So in, 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 in scripture, there is a couple of scriptures that use this. In John 1.12, it says, But to all who did receive him, who believed in his, his name, he gave the right to become children of God, to become technon. First John 3, 1 John 3.1, it says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The word their children is technon. But by contrast, huios, the literal meaning there is actually son. And what it does is that it signifies male offspring, yes. But oftentimes it's used mostly to focus in on basically the relationship that a father has to his son. Particularly in terms of status, privilege, and inheritance. The connotation in huios is, the connotation around this word huios conveys an idea of a mature son, one who carries responsibility, one who has a role in the family. It often recognizes, this is, this is a recognition of status, of position, particularly in a very legal sense. And some examples in scripture, it says that for all who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons, the huyos of God. And it's in Galatians 4, 6. And because you are sons, huyos, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a huyos, a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. And so the thing is, is that you see these two distinctions between these words, that in a sense the base word is the same, but one is a connotation towards a biological connection, while this other one speaks to responsibility, maturity. One is a, a child, baby, the children of Israel, versus the sons of God. Do you see the distinction? And so the thing that you see here in this book, in Ephesians, Paul already makes reference to it in this first chapter. That after he does the salutation and he says, this is to the faithful in Christ Jesus. He says in verse 3 to 5, praise be to God, to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship, to huyos, through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will. And so you see the distinction here is that as technon of God, Believers are seen as God's children by birthright, emphasizing this new birth that we have received in Jesus Christ. It's a part of the identity that we have received, which is why Paul addresses the holy, those who are made holy, those are those who have received a new identity through faith in Christ Jesus. But the faithful, but as huyos of God, these are the believers seen as sons with full rights and inheritance. They, this, is, this emphasizes their, their status, their privilege, their responsibilities in God's family. This is the reason why when you read the first chapter, you see Paul talking about the ideas around a glorious inheritance available to God's holy people. He talks about the privilege that they have received in reference to the great power that is available to them that believe. He talks about the status of literally being seated with Christ in heavenly places, which is what he talks about actually in chapter 2 of the book of Ephesians, which speaks to authority. These are concepts that relate to huyos and not technon. Because sonship 
is grown-up stuff. It's a new level of understanding. Hence why he prays and asks that would these who are listening and who are reading this letter, that they would receive spiritual wisdom and revelation. Because sonship is a place of responsibility, a place of understanding the heart of the Father, enough to know what is his will, that his will would be done. It's a place in which where we don't turn away from sacrifice and the sacrifice that is required to live a godly life. And you know, the thing that's so interesting is that what God has been revealing to me over the past couple of weeks, as I've you know, been studying the book of Numbers and Deuteronomy, is that he, he begins to, to kind of paint this contrast. That as I'm looking and studying now, it's like, I'm like, oh, the children of Israel. <laughs> that these people, upon leaving slavery in Egypt and living in the wilderness, now I understand why they were called children. Because in many ways, when you look at them, you realize how childish they were. In every way. You know, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, 11, which is now, when even in Corinthians, he's addressing a lot of people who are, he's, he, he considers to be immature on milk. He says, when I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. And the thing that is so interesting is that when you go read the book of Numbers and you see how the children of Israel operated, you begin to start to see what childish living looks like. Because they were incapable, in as much as they were those chosen by God, redeemed from slavery, they were incapable of attaining that which God had in store for them because they were so childish. Because of their faithlessness. In Galatians 4 chapter 1, Paul writes, If a father dies and leaves an inheritance for his young children, those children are not much better off than slaves until they grow up, even though they actually own everything their father had. Friends, the reality is that some of us are stuck at Technon and have refused to become and to live out the Huyos life. We are stuck at Technon. Children that have refused to enter into the sonship that was purchased for us through the shed blood of the Son of the living God. You know, one of the ways for me personally that God addressed this in my own life was that he showed me how childish I was in my prayer life. Friends, for almost 25 years, I have been walking with the Lord. And I can tell you right now, 98% of my prayer life was a prayer life where I prayed 5 to 10 minutes a day. So earlier this year, God began to challenge me. And he said to me, Timba, I want you to grow up in your prayer life. And I remember when he, when he, when he, when he spoke to me about this, I, you know, for me, I was like, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to do this, Lord? How, do you, what, what, how can I grow in my prayer life? And one day I was reading his word and I noticed something. In the story in, in Matthew 26, which is the story of the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, where Jesus is, is right before Jesus is arrested. We see the story of how Jesus goes to a place called Gethsemane to pray with Peter, James, and John. And what happens is that Jesus is in great agony and he goes away to pray and he comes back to find his disciples sleeping. And he says to them, couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter, Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And immediately I read that. The spirit quickened that word in my heart, and I knew that's where the answer is. And basically what God was saying to me is, Thimba, I want you to pray at least one hour every day. And he even went ahead to give me a specific time that he wanted me to do it. 
friends, let me tell you something. As someone who has lived almost, like I've told you, 98% of my Christian life on five to ten minutes here and there, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I read God's word, but in terms of my prayer life, like, I, I, you know, being diligent in reading God's word, but in terms of like committing myself to prayer, it's like eh, there was, there's been spots, periods, then it's just like, but overall, it's this like five to ten minutes, you know? And I remember after God shared this with me, I remember just thinking, I'm like, one hour. Imagine, in my head, as it's like every day at, at that time, I was like, bruh. <laughs> but I felt so convicted about this. And I knew that after almost 20 years of following after God, that this was something that I needed to do. That what seemed so daunting is fascinating to me because to Jesus, that was the minimum threshold that he wanted from me. Friends, remember what I told you. We are here to have grown-up conversations. We are not here to have, we are here to have a grown-up conversation. And the reality of what God was saying to me is that you have a technon prayer life. And he's like, it's time to get into the huyos. It's time for you to enter into the huyos life, my son. It's time for you to grow up. This is the minimum threshold for my sons, for my huyos. And so friends, this whole thing, I began to practice it and it has radically changed my life. Things that I have struggled with for years, falling off, and me being like, you're trying to tell me all along. These things that I've been struggling with, all I needed to do was to be committed in my prayer life, was for me to commit myself into the secret place. Friends, let me tell you something. The enemy knows that when we remain as technon, that we are no better than slaves. Because technons, children, they don't take territory. They don't understand inheritance or authority. They are no threat to his kingdom. As long as we remain technon, we will never be able to exercise our privileges that we have received in Christ Jesus. We will remain the children of Israel, moving around in circles, never quite getting anywhere, unsettled, moving from place to place, disgruntled, constantly complaining, worshipping idols. As technon, you will always see yourself as a grasshopper, never quite understanding who you truly are in Christ Jesus. And the enemy knows this. He doesn't want you to grow up. He doesn't want you to enter into your who yours era. Because once you do, it's game over. Because who yours understand authority and exercise it. Who yours take, take, they take territory. Who yours conquer nations and revitalize desolate cities. Who yours make disciples of nations. Who yours seek out the will of God. They are led by the Spirit of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. The Bible speaks of that all creation is longing and waiting, not for the manifestation of the children of God, not for the manifestation of technon, but the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God, the huyos. That is what creation is longing for. And friends, because we're having a grown-up conversation, in the same way that God challenged me, I want to say to you that if your current, if the current expression of your faith and relationship with God goes something like, I wake up, you know, I say, I say, I say like a quick prayer, do like a five-minute devotion, go to the gym for one hour, work out, you know, get ready for work. 
if 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 the if if in the context of your day we're talking about a five five to five to ten minute expression of your spirituality where you get to spend time in the secret place, it's like five to ten minutes. I want to be able to just suggest to you that you might be living a technon lifestyle and you need to grow up. To spend one hour building your body and 10 minutes building your spirit. I hear this was the word of God for me. Himba, grow up. <laughs> Very lovingly, that is what my father was saying to me. Because the technon life cannot even begin to enter into the glorious treasure and inheritance that we have already received in Christ. The life that Jesus literally suffered, died, and bled for you to enjoy and experience. Absolutely, you will get to heaven, but all the while living a defeated life here on earth. And the thing is, a technon life is self-evident. In the same way, a huyos life is self-evident. My friends, we're having a grown-up conversation. And I want you to know if you're feeling a conviction in your heart, glory to God, because remember, whenever God rebukes you about something, one of the things that he always reminds me when he challenges me about something he, is he takes me to Hebrews 12, where he says, and have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? My child, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. This is actually, when God begins to point out these things in our lives, this is actually a manifestation of his love and approval of you. It's him saying, I love you, I approve of you, and I want the very best of you. And that technon life is not going to get you anywhere. And my friends, me, I'm telling you this as someone who for almost 20 years plus lived and expressed a technon prayer life. You know, the thing that's so interesting is that when you go read about the children of Israel, you realize that even in the wilderness, the children of Israel had victories. God was still with them. Cloud by day, pillar of fire by night. He fed them manna. They won battles in the wilderness. They were nourished. Their clothes never got weary. They, but, but the reality is that they never entered the promised land. So don't even be deceived as I'm telling you, even me, as someone who is here preaching. Let me tell you, don't be deceived. There are people who are active in ministry and still techno. <laughs> Living a techno lifestyle because the foundation of the Huyo's life isn't built on the many activities for the Lord. The Huyo's life is built in the secret place. Where we understand that the most important relationship is the relationship that we have with God. This is how Jesus, the model of sonship, lived his life here on earth. In the secret place. The secret place is the place that forges, that brings out the Huyo's in you. It is in the secret place where we learn to submit to God's will. It's in the secret place that God reveals mysteries, that he begins to reveal the mysteries of his will, where we begin to understand what it means to be chosen by God, where we begin to understand what it means to be his masterpiece, created for, his, for good works. It is in that place, it's in the secret place that Kuyos is forged in you. And it is the place that we must begin today. The secret place is where we put on the Huyo's life. That is where the Huyo's life begins, in the secret place. Friends, there is no relationship more important than the one that you will have with God. This is the reason why we see Jesus consistently going to the secret place, going into the place of prayer, to, to commune with his Father, 
Why? Because he was a curious. He wasn't just a technon, but a curious. And curious is forged. Is 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 this is where that 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 sonship begins to manifest itself. This is the place in which the huyos begins to be revealed in us. You know, in the first chapter that we just read, Paul says a prayer that I want to pray for you today. He says, I pray that may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. I pray today that may God enlighten you that you might acknowledge and respond to his invitation to come higher, to go deeper, to draw nearer to him. I pray that you would find the courage to enter into your Julio's era in Jesus' name because this is available to you. And I pray that for each and every single one of us, that we would not just be techno, but that we would also enter into our huyos, which is found and forged, where we learn, where we grow, and all that is in the secret place that we would be committed to the secret place with our Father who teaches us how to express the sonship that he died a shameful death for you to have. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a grown-up conversation. Amen. I never, ever, ever, ever want to end a message without first making sure that whoever is listening and you are there listening and you have not made a decision already even just to be in the call of being God's chosen and holy people, that you have not even become a technon. Forget about a who yours. And today is an opportunity for you to enter into our relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And if you're there wanting to make that decision, I want you to pray this prayer of repentance with me. And I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner in need of your grace. I give my life to you. And I believe in what you have done for me on the cross. Come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. Amen. If you pray that prayer, hit us up down there on WhatsApp and reach out to us so that we can walk this journey together with you. And if you're sick in your body right now, wherever it is that you're sick, I want you to place your hand where it is and allow me to pray a prayer of faith for you. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for that person that is putting their hand wherever it is that they are sick. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that your healing power through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ would overflow towards them and that their bodies and minds and wherever it is that they are ill would be restored to fullness in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you guys. 
see you again hey guys thank you so much for watching listen if this message blessed you please be sure to share with someone whom you love share with a friend a colleague anyone and then also listen support us support this ministry so that we can be able to make more dope content and be able to spread this message of the kingdom to as many people as possible and then make sure that you subscribe sour subscribe subscribe wherever the button subscribe subscribe god bless you guys Thank you.